Welcome back to this week's coverage of CinemaCon, now that a few days have passed since the event. And if you weren't aware, all sorts of studios came out and announced all sorts of movies, but then didn't release a trailer for anything animated, so... We're winging it as we go so far. And today we're talking about a project from the Paramount presentation, as they have indeed announced a new Spongebob movie. I mean, of course they have. It makes sense. This is an IP that's eternal, but... Let's get into what we know. Rounded exactly 20 years after the original Spongebob movie, and the best one out of the bunch to be honest, and also the canonical ending, a real modern classic in my opinion, Nickelodeon somehow have only actually made three in the past two decades. Each with more and more diminishing returns for quality, although I guess improving profits as they go. So of course, yes, they are squatting down and squeezing out another sequel out of this out of date franchise. Not only is Spongebob now over 25 years old overall, but also now a 20 year old movie franchise. His childish antics seem creepier and creepier by the year. Now we weren't just given the fact that there is a fourth Spongebob movie in the works, we actually have a release date and title for this production, as it's set to be called The Spongebob Movie Search for Squarepants. No four, not following the format of the past titles, it's really a fast and furious format. Spongebob colon Squarepants later. And it seems to be very far into production, surprisingly, as it's been announced to release next year. Although with a title like Search for Squarepants, it's kind of just covering some of the same tracks again. Didn't they already just spend the last movie searching for Gary? Are we really doing this again? This franchise really has lost all creativity since the creator died. In my opinion, I feel like I'd be more interested in a Patrick Star movie, since there seems to be a lot more creativity and freedom going on in his TV show. In fact, actually, maybe it's going to be a thing where these titles are secretly all combining to one big prompt, because considering the last one was called Sponge on the Run, it, it's kind of just the same as Search for the Squarepants. It, it's literally talking about the same movie. And I'm afraid looking into this title a little bit more, I'm sad to announce this might be more of some sort of Paramount corporate synergy plan, much to the likes of Warner Brothers flaunting all the IPs they own, since this is a reference to the third Star Trek movie, The Search for Spock. So even in the title, they're just copying someone else's homework. Still, I mean, you never know. Maybe this whole thing will be a giant Star Trek crossover with Mr. Krabs captaining another Krabby Patty vehicle, the shape of the Enterprise whilst looking for Spongebob. If they did do something like a sci-fi fantasy story, that would at least make it different. Although that's the thing, actually. If we do look into this more as being a big reference to the third Star Trek movie, does that mean that Spongebob himself won't be in much of the movie? If the plot is searching for Squarepants, then we can't really know where Squarepants is to make it intriguing. Not that these sequels really have that as a priority. On the other hand, it could also be a philosophical meaning, with Spongebob searching for himself and who he is, kind of like what they did with Finding Dory, and that had fish in it, so... Instant money? Really, I guess Paramount's got all sorts of homework they can copy from. Great. Still, whether it is original or just slapped together, it's probably not a surprise that there is yet another Spongebob movie, as they had amazing success with the original one whilst Spongebob was at his peak popularity, through the theatrical release that was just as zany and submersive as the series. Overseen by the Spongebob team, creator Steven Hillenburg essentially used the movie as his farewell to working on Spongebob directly, stepping away after its release. This was his finale, and boy did he do a good job with it. He even said that no matter at what point the series ends, this could be considered as what happens at the end of Spongebob's story. Not that canon has ever really been a thing for Bikini Bottom, but fundamentally, Spongebob's life as a character escalates and changes in the first movie, which undermines the episodic rest of the installment of the TV show. So we can always at least hold on to that near and dear to our hearts and plug it at the end, plug it at the end of whenever Nickelodeon's finally done with this franchise. However, it's great that the movie does this, as the feature length asks for this development and character progression to really justify it not being just an extension of the TV show. I'd contend Spongebob actually, in this respect, did achieve this quite a lot better than the Simpsons movie. Don't get me wrong, they did well with such a difficult prompt, but you could make the argument that the movie's story could be done in a normal Simpsons episode. Not as in-depth, but you could. The Spongebob team did a story that you'd never fit into a regular 10-minute episode. It makes it such a huge scope, which is what you need in what I would call a quest movie. And quest movies have always been great for comedies in particular. You get to have your lead characters go on a zany adventure with an end goal, where they encounter various characters and scenarios on the way, each acting as their own little sketch, basically. With some classics being the likes of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and Princess Bride. This also has a subdivision of the quest movie, where the quest movie blends into the road trip movie. This is a very specific type of movie, one that a lot of other cartoons and cartoon live-action hybrids go for. 
Alas, we now have a hundred movies with cartoon characters sat next to a white guy that happens to be James Marsden in a car, and hey, it's a road trip. However, SpongeBob is one of the movies that totally got that right, at least the first time, whilst also cutting back and forth between the quest and the other events of the movie. It keeps its story easy to follow, whilst keeping the scale huge by both cutting back to Bikini Bottom, and also visually with the long roads and vast ocean, you do buy into SpongeBob and Patrick being far away. Also, giving these two traditionally static characters genuine character arcs that resolve across the movie with all this going on, this thing's also kind of a coming of age story that it wears on its sleeve. I mean, there's literally the whole music number, Now That We're Men. This first movie was such a well done adaptation of the series that heightens the characters and develops them in a way that is faithful to their traits in the series. This is such a well done adaptation of the series that heightens the characters and develops them in a way that is faithful to their traits in the series, but it really pains me to move on to the sequels next. Thank you for making it halfway through this video. Do check below to see if you are subscribed and let us know how you think you would do a fourth movie if you had to do it well. I don't have high hopes that this is gonna be good. I think it's just gonna be cliche standard and following all the traits of the past two movies. But tell me an interesting choice they could do. Maybe Squidward gets a big arc for realizing he does miss SpongeBob like they did in that one episode, but make it bigger, you know? Anyway, tell me your thoughts in the YouTube comments or on our Discord server, and I'll let you get back to the rest of the video now. Yeah, if you're familiar with this channel, you probably know that I'm not a fan of either of the subsequent movies. With both of them, whilst much of the same creative team was still seen to be involved, it feels very corporately mandated, particularly the plot beats of the second one. Sponge Out of Water was released in 2015, with most of it being a kind of mid-Spongebob that largely keeps it traditional animation. Up until the third act, whereby Nickelodeon execs clearly screamed, turn them into the Avengers or something. I don't know what's weirder really, this plot beat being a thing, or the fact that it was marketed as that being the whole movie, whilst only actually being the final 20 minutes. For me, that was good for lowering my expectations by advertising the worst bit, only to surprise me with some actual Spongebob stuff. However, it does smell like a little bit of false advertising for the families who were going for that and its extra selling point of being in 3D. Wow. Anyway, you don't need me to retread too much on this being a massive step down from the original. It's like Nickelodeon forgot that the first movie got extra brownie points for being a well put together movie and not a kitty kitty colourful wallet to collect pocket money in. That's it? This movie feels like Mr. Krabs commissioned it. It's all about money, money, money. And then we come to the weirdest part of the story, Spongebob Sponge on the Run. If you want a dedicated video on it, I've already done that for you, so take a look. But in summary, when the trailers came out, it looked like they had really gone for something different because... Well, the animation was CG made to look like stop motion. We'd seen this in a very different light with the Lego movie, which was absolutely seamless for something made up of everyday objects that we all recognize. Honestly, Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem considered, I'm starting to think Nickelodeon just copies Lord and Miller movies every time they break into a new animation style. To be fair, Sponge on the Run isn't like the Lego movie at all. Instead, the stop motion looks like the characters have been molded and then vibrantly painted. It's sometimes like half the characters have been made out of painted china. It's really weird. But that's where my compliments for the movie dry out, really. It's not completely awful, it's passable at best, but the spin-off series shamelessly set up in the middle and the finale of the movie is gross for many reasons. Because you see, any spin-off series was being blocked by creator Steven Hillenburg. However, luckily for the hungry executives at Nickelodeon, he passed away. So come 2020, there was nothing stopping them from using this movie as a backdoor pilot for Camp Coral. If anything, it's more of a front door pilot as it's very clear what they are doing. I'm kind of glad Karma found them as they ultimately had to put this on Netflix after the pandemic closed all the theaters. Anyway, that came out and then Camp Coral launched with its literally watered down Muppet Babies tiny toon premise and yeah, evil. So when it comes to this fourth movie for 2025, Let's just say I'm not expecting amazing things. It'll likely still stick to the 3D animation since that seems to be the vibe for these movies. Long gone is traditional animation for Spongebob, at least in the theatrical form. And don't expect to see any plot points having been carried around between any of these movies, which to be fair may be a good thing. It's basically a factory reset of the characters and story each movie. Besides the callback to Goofy Goobers and the Paddy Wagon in the third one. Less so a good thing, I don't think either of the sequels ever challenged Spongebob as a character as well as the first movie. The lowest moment for me may be in the third one when there's one moment that seems to completely betray Spongebob's character. 
The scene where he gambles in a casino shouting at Patrick to let it ride, it's something I think Hillenburg probably turned in his grave over, you know? It's like the animators imitated what he saw a Nickelodeon executive doing. In fact, there are times where the characters seem to be vehicles for cheap jokes that don't really suit their established characters, something the first one did so well. It's the same voices and the 3D models look like them, but it doesn't feel like them. So, if they want to do something special with this movie, this is what they should do throw all of the best comedy writers into a room to come up with the most insane, hilarious story that they can put together. The South Park guys are under Paramount for God's sake, I bet they could make a great Spongebob movie if you asked. All you have to do is make this a good one, show some respect for its creators, and then end the series. My god, I'm pretty sure the only episodes people generally remember predate the original movie. But likely what we're gonna get is just a hodgepodge mix of all the terrible things slapped together. It'll probably be another road trip movie with everyone except Spongebob. Characters will act out of character for tiny gags and jokes. Every meme under the sun is gonna be announced. Somebody's gonna say El Riz. And we're gonna cringe at the 3D animation the whole way through. Or it will go through the development hell that is the Sandy Cheeks movie that hasn't appeared and has also been leaked. What a mess. It's been 25 years of Spongebob, folks, and 35 years of The Simpsons. Just release new movies for both and have that as the finale. These are 90s shows. Please, just let them rest on a good note, for the love of God. The only peak that modern Spongebob has reached is Spongebob calling out Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio, 25! <laughs> Anyway, that's the info for Spongebob Movie 4, The Search for Squarepants. I'm not excited for it at all, I'll always have the original to look back on, and at least I can be content in knowing that's the canon official ending, no matter how poorly they shove this franchise into the dirt and disrespect the creator as they go. But I guess being so negative now means maybe we can be positively surprised later. For now though, that's all I've got for you for now. My name's been Daz. Thank you for making it to the very end of this video. If you have ideas on how they could do this fourth movie well, I'd love to hear it in the comments or over on our Discord server where our community chats about this kind of stuff. And I shall see you in a little bit.